The speech that Franklin Delano Roosevelt planned on giving on this day, April 13th, in 1945, was a message of hope through science, peace, and understanding. Here is the speech we couldn't hear then. Hopefully, we can hear it now. Franklin D. Roosevelt's last message to the American people. Americans are gathered together this evening in communities all over the country to pay tribute to the living memory of Thomas Jefferson, one of the greatest of all Democrats. And I want to make it clear that I am spelling that word Democrats with a small d. In this historic year, more than ever before, we do well to consider the character of Thomas Jefferson as an American citizen of the world. Today, this nation, which Jefferson helped so greatly to build, is playing a tremendous part in the battle for the rights of man and women all over the world. Today, we are part of the vast allied force, a force composed of flesh and blood and still and spirit, which is today destroying the makers of war, the breeders of hatred in Europe and in Asia. In Jefferson's time, our Navy consisted of only a handful of frigates headed by the gallant USS Constellation, Old Ironside, but that tiny Navy taught nations across the Atlantic that piracy in the Mediterranean, acts of aggression against the peaceful commerce and the enslavement of their crews was one of those things which, among neighbors, simply was not done. Today we have learned in the agony of war that great power involves great responsibility. We as Americans do not choose to deny our responsibility, nor do we intend to abandon our determination that within the lives of our children and our children's children, there will not be a third world war. We seek peace, enduring peace. More than an end to war, we want an end to the beginnings of all wars. Yes, an end to this brutal, inhuman, and thoroughly impractical method of settling the differences between governments. But the mere conquest of our enemies is not enough. We must go on to do all in our power to conquer the doubts and the fears, the ignorance, and the greed which makes all wars possible. Thomas Jefferson, himself a distinguished scientist, once spoke of the brotherly spirit of science, which unites into one family all its votaries of whatever grade, and however widely dispersed throughout the different quarters of the globe. Today, science has brought all the different quarters of the globe so close together that it is impossible to isolate them from one another. Today, we are faced with the preeminent fact that if civilization is to survive, we must cultivate the science of human relationships, the ability of all peoples, of all kinds, to live together in a world together, to live together and work together in the same world at peace. Let me assure you that my hand is the steadier for the work that is to be done. I move more firmly into the task, knowing that you, millions and millions of you, are joined with me in the resolve to make this work endure. The work, my friends, is peace an end to the beginnings of all wars. Yes, an end forever to the impractical, unrealistic settlement of the differences between governments by the mass killing of peoples. Today, as we move against the terrible scourge of war, as we go forward toward the greatest contribution that any generation of human beings can make in this world, the contribution of a lasting peace, I ask you to keep up your faith. I measure the sound, solid achievement that can be made at this time by the straight edge of your own confidence and your resolve. And to you and to all Americans who dedicate themselves with us to the making of an abiding peace, I say, the only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. Let us move forward with strong and active faith. Uh, Mr. Roosevelt died the night before he gave that message. What a timely message today with the war in Russia and Ukraine from what I call the shirtless warrior, Vladimir Putin. The guy's out of his mind. He's just going over there now and can kill him millions. And then there is the science deniers today who deny the uh, vaccinations science. They say it's some kind of liberal plot, you know. And, of course, there's the uh, environmental destruction that's happening and all those deniers of that. Yeah, that's the, uh, that's the world we're in now. What an eerie message from FDR on the eve of his death. And we should all take note of that right here today. All of us peace-loving people, which is most of us, get together and let's make it happen. Peace out. 
to all of you, I say, we can now march forward, all of us together.